Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today we're going to be doing this gorgeous, fun fantasy landscape. This idea about painting a better place than maybe we have in reality, or a concept or an idea of of a paradise, or just that unlike known vista, that fantasy planet. I got my Doctor Who on, you know, like there could be a planet with this out there. But this idea, I grew up with this, um, and I remember looking into these and wondering, you know, what it would like to be there. So today, we're going to paint perfection, but we're not going to worry about being perfect, which is an interesting um, kind of journey. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to be keeping me all chill and mellow, tracking with the cameras, getting zoomed in with robotic cam, and reading your comments, because we do these live streaming you know, to make things more fun. But yeah, today's big thing is like, all right, so we're going to paint a perfect place, but we're not going to worry about being perfect artists. I think that's going to be a really good thing for us to do. I've got my 11 by 14 canvas board here. I grabbed these. I grabbed this at uh, Michael's. They come in packs. I've written some wishes on here with watercolor pencil that I'm going to blend in and then paint over. Today we have Missy wishes for healing of her eye uh, for husband. Nikita wishes for a lovely nest for her and her little baby birds. Um, that's sort of a metaphor, but just a beautiful, wonderful place for them to land and be safe. Uh, happy birthday to Alice. Um, and then this was just a really wonderful one. Um, and we're all going to just put our positivity into this. We were wishing that Samantha Sayer um, is home and safe with her family. I was checking up on this again today. And we actually have... A community member that's connected to the Sayer family who put this in there so we're definitely putting this up and I don't know I'm going to give this one over to the universe and say I don't know how I don't know why but I would love to hear in the next like 24 hours that she's home and safe and doing really well that's my personal wish how would you John yeah okay so those are our wishes on the canvas I'm going to miss these and blend these in something to know about these boards is that if you over wet them they can buckle so you want to be careful you wouldn't want to soak them or do really wet applications of paint I have Thalo green, thalo blue, and titanium white. This is a palette pad. It's new. You may be like, well, that looks new. It is new. I like it so much. This is the new wave uh, peel palette in the wood color. And I've been, I'm testing it and they're cool like handheld one. I'm liking them so far. I am. It's okay. They are working as they should. I'm going to start out by painting my whole painting with a blue background that I can build up from. So sometimes this is referred to as an acrylic ground, but we're really not going to do an acrylic ground as much as an underpainting because we're going to do a slightly thicker, more stable application of the paint. I'm going to pull out one part blue and one part green. I'll mix those together. And this makes sort of a phthalo turquoise, that mix of the phthalo green and the phthalo blue. All of the paint colors are in the description below. Is this new? Is what new? Is this format new where I'm in the picture and we're on the palette? Is that new? I did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. It's good. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing that now. Well, you just sometimes get talky when you're mixing paint. And <laughs> I noticed that people like to see you when you're talking. So I I'm them... not talking, am I? <laughs> You're a little bit. You got it. You got to know you're talking when Rumor there's entire it. groups that have chatty warnings <laughs> <laughs> about you, and you hear about it. You're like, oh, okay, I have a warning label now. <laughs> oh, that's fine. All right, so I've got my. <laughs> I felt so called on the mat, like the teacher <laughs> caught me doing something. I was like, nope, I wasn't doing that. I know what you're talking about. That's not new. I didn't do it. This is serious business we're up to, Mr. Cooney. There's we no are making art pictures. here. Art. I, I cannot be art. held responsible for anything that happens on this channel. Can you it believe is this is live? Not my fault. I am not doing any of these things. It's all YouTube. That's right. That's right. It's the algorithm. Is it <laughs> the algorithm? <gasps> Well, there you go. And that's how this Sunday is going to be because it's, we're not being perfect. We're being, we're being I, happy and we're painting a better space. And John's keeping us mindful of that clearly with shenanigans. I, I guess so. That's, I have to teach some art. 
Okay, you get to it. I'm going to teach you guys some art. He's going to keep goofing with me. Don't expect this to stop. Okay. There's no point leaving Hannah like, oh, if this were less silly, this is going to continue to be silly. This is marriage. Yo. This is marriage and this is art. So I have a number 30 bright short handle ruby satin. And I'm going to load it up with some of this thalo turquoise color. And you can see that I'm flipping the brush and pulling it into the brush. This is pulling the pigment in. And now I'm going to grab this blue and do a similar thing. I'm just trying to get a nice load of pigment in here so that I can just paint this whole thing. And I'll mist it just a little bit so that the watercolor lifts up and we, we lose the words into the paint. If we can. Now I'm going to do an interesting thing here. I'm going to do some of this in this sort of, look at it, it's from the upper right corner down towards the lower left corner. And you can see I'm just brushing back and forth on the wide. It's, it's now, making a little bit of a streaky space. Now I noticed there was a little bit of water running off your brush there. A little bit, uh, here or here? When, when, you were just, when you were just making that stroke there. I think that's from misting the canvas. Ah, okay. I so, misted the canvas and I may have misted it heavily. And now I'm not getting anything for a second because remember what I said about the buckling? Yeah. Now, how, <laughs> so, much water, how much water should you have on your brush? You shouldn't have drips coming off. It should be moist enough to allow the paint to flow off. We actually did, remember on the Technique Tuesday, we did too much water, not enough water. Oh, yeah, that's a good one to go back to. Yeah, and that's on Facebook, but you can still rewatch those Facebook videos whenever you want. I know they're a little more challenging if you're new to the Facebook video format to find, but once you get used to it, you'll be able to navigate those as easily as my YouTube channel, which has 700 videos, not for nothing. So it's its own challenge to navigate. <laughs> I'm going to continue to get more paint on my brush. I'm just making sure that the canvas has this particular coat of paint that we're going to build everything up from under painting. I could probably, well, I could save a lot of time if one, I stopped chatting and two, I did this first, but hey, then you wouldn't know I'm doing it. I'm going to dry this painting now and John's going to get stuck talking to you all by himself. Watch him panic. It's real fun. I didn't know that we were going to be doing that today. So she's just going to say, fine, you can go and just talk to your friends. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like, hey, yo, how's it going? It's good to see you guys here today. And as always, I really love having all my friends here to hang out with us. Quick reminder, I'll give you a tech tip. Tech tip. If today, if it, uh, if you're using a air mover at home to to speed cure your surface, make sure that you're on the lowest heat setting because those uh, those air movers there they can cause uh, heat they, they can cause heat uh, color heat induced color distortion and shrinkage on some of your more budget oriented paints. But on your pro paints, those will be you aren't going to have that problem. So uh, yeah, that was it. Public service announcement, don't use heat to dry your, cure your surface. It's true, it can accelerate your color shift. Not, not, not intrinsically, but it can, and, and that's good to know. Yes, good to Sunday. know. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm, I need to turn my mic up, I'm low. I'm talking quietly. There we go, how about that? John talks quiet, I talk I do. loud. I talk quietly. We've got a con coming up, a, a meetup, and... Um, there's a lot happening besides <laughs> teaching classes, and I'm <sighs> doing my own breathing exercises to keep myself a chillin. All right, so I'm going to think about the positioning of my canvas below the halfway point. I'm going to make a horizon line in my perfect little universe. This is where my water place begins. And... Everything above that is sky, and then everything below that line will end up being water. You want that to be as level as you can make it because that's going to really help you give that implication of water. Because I'm being more sweepy with the sky, I'm going to probably end up coming back and putting that line back in. I just wanted to know where I could stop my brush stroke. And I'm going to get my brush wet again. I'm going to drag off the extra water and also kind of pull out the extra pigment because I got quite a lot. When you load these correctly, they can get a lot of pigment. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to start with my white. And you'll notice that I haven't gotten any of my other pigment. And I'm going to go ahead at this 
juncture and I'm going to be doing this sort of sweeping up stroke like you do. So it's it's just almost like it's just a maybe a, even a shade lighter than a robin egg blue. Oh yeah. And I'm pulling this up. And what's nice about the canvas underneath it being blue is that as the paint is, you know, different densities and somewhat streaky, it comes through and that keeps that very perfect blue oceanic day energy going, which is nice. Now, as I'm going, I can load back up into my brush with the pigment and you can see I'm still doing that flip load. And I'm gonna come back here and this is the second coat for the sky. What's super nice about that is that we can get that in pretty easily. And then right here, if you want, you can very lightly, see I'm coming right here and I'm gonna just very lightly go back and forth over this. I'm gonna do something kind of cool, kind of gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna get, this is so funny, labeling the brushes is crazy, called the ultimate varnish brush. But actually it has replaced a lot of my blenders. <laughs> And the reason that I have uh, switched this for the uh, goat hair blenders, which, you know, are wonderful, is because it's a synthetic filament and therefore is more resilient to the acrylic paint. But I can really soften that transition using that. You could also just use any clean dry brush that you have. We're just softening those transitions. I just wanted to show you that. If you happen to have one of these already, another really cool use for it. <laughs> Super cool. I'm going to get a little bright and I'm going to think I'm going to get, hmm, just a, just a traditional normal little bright. This is a Cambridge number eight bright. A number 10 would work as well. And I'm going to go ahead and load up with some of my white paint here. And I'm going to come and I don't know why I always put, I put like I'm, like I'm dueling. I put one hand behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird things that I've been doing lately that I've been noticing. And I'm going to just wiggle this brush. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth. And I'm going to pull up sort of the top line of a cloud shape here. Maybe some top line. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You're just, uh, you're just having a little conversation with your brush. Wet into wet paint. And you can come right here and, you know, you can blend back and forth as you go. Here we go, just like maybe some of this here and oh, that's really just, let's just wiggle this. Clouds, if you're gonna notice, have this up and they come down into a little V and they go around and they, they're very impacted by many, many things like wind and temperature and moisture of the air. So when we're painting them, we're really talking about the weather and the day uh, in a very deep and meaningful way way. So if I'm trying to talk about a perfect place, I'll probably want a happy little cloud. <laughs> and then continue to... I was sipping my coffee. Were you sipping your coffee? I like I'm brushing that clouds. light color down there and I'm going to come and just continue to... So maybe talk about these little things a little bit. We're going to just paint some clouds today. Now, I have a problem. No. I've cloned. Which is that I've got a like a comb. Uh, okay, so so you cloned it. Yes, I did. I repeated my pattern. So what I'm going to do and here. That, and that clone looks a little bit like a comb. Like a comb. I cloned it and it looks like a comb. Okay. And so, that's not, I'm not saying that no cloud like that's ever existed. I'm just saying. So by cloning. We would look meaning, at that cloud like it was a very strange little fellow. But by breaking up that shape and changing that up a bit, that gets more cloud like. Now, by cloning, you mean you don't want a repeating pattern that looks un. That's exactly what I mean. Don't repeat yourself unless you're me, and then repeat yourself so much. Huh. I'm going to bring some more of my white paint here, and I'm going to do a low bank. It can be nice to change the direction of your brush. And you can see I'm just on the corner here, and I'm just wiggling. I have cloud brushes. I've got brights. I've got blenders. I've got fans. So many ways to do a good cloud. Get a little more of my white out here. It's fun just to take some of that little white. And I can just 
sweep this in. Now I'm just doing this sweeping motion and I'm making these little banks, aren't I? Little happy cloud banks. Who's got a happy cloud bank? You. So when I'm doing a cloud up into the upper sky, I have to remember that I've got to talk about the background color and my cloud color. It's nice to actually get a blue in there and then work out my little shape. See, I'm just getting this crazy little cloud shape. It's not really wet here anymore because acrylic paint is drying on you. You might have noticed this little affectation of the paint. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm just in a painterly manner painting out some of the shape. Now I'm going to brush back and forth underneath, underneath, and I'm going to pull it forward. And that's like a little air current has pulled it down. And if you'll notice, I've sort of laid the space for this windy day by the directionality of my paint. I'm going to get some just white. I'm going to come and talk about some of it, Cloud. It could be in that lighter space. A little bit. You can... Add some of these highlights. See how we're just brushing that down? Yeah. And blend it down. And then you can just take some wispies up there. If I see clouds like this, I'll often expect to see some of these high aerial wispies. And how I'm going to get that is you can see my load of my paint on here is just a regular load. Brush is pretty dry. My pressure is light like a butterfly wing kissing the canvas. Uh, back in the early day of the show, we used to talk about wet cat pressure, just pressing mm -hmm. so gently you don't anger the wet cat. I'm just going to create these bits of atmospheric high cloud whistles, like horse's tails. I think these are actually called horse's tails, aren't they? I don't know. Something like that. I am not a meteorologist. I am also not. Darn it, Sherpa. I'm a, I'm a button pusher, not a meteorologist. But in my feeling, it's nice to change up. I'm going to add some bright white to the top of these little clouds. A little of your uh, cloud texture so that you don't have just one type of cloud, but you have a different variety of clouds. And the reason for this is, is that um, a lot of times when you work with Photoshop images and you create your own, the sky isn't really as dynamic as you need it to be. And as a painter, you can be like, that's cool. I got the basic gist. Yeah, cloudy sky. But I want it to be a dynamic cloudy sky. So you can always come back and just make it your own. I'm going to add a little white here. It, yeah. It's I'm creating those little forward puffs. As you become a student of clouds, you do learn that there are s clouds that go in seasons and that can go together or can't, generally speaking, go together. And that was a whole interesting journey for me. Like, that cloud should not go next to that cloud. Right. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even know that. Which is, I still can't say that I totally know it, but I mean, I'm now aware of it. So I think it's a good, it's just interesting to me. I'm just looking for little spots in my cloud structure to build some dimensionality to this cloud okay. where we're talking about its multi inner structures. We want to make a beautiful skyscape. Look at that right there. That's nice. Just going forward, we're avoiding our clones. Up here, we can be like, oh, hey, have a little forward. Highlight. And what this is, is, you're talking about there's a sun up here off of our canvas and it's lighting the cloud and everything below it. And so when we create these white little highlights, what we're really saying is the sun is overhead. Lovely. Looking there. Yeah, that looks very cloudy. It's very cumulus y. <laughs> So Ian says, we don't know what kind of cloud it is other than a Sherpa cloud. It's a Sherpa cloud, man. It's a Sherpa cloud. In this universe, these little clouds are out there. You might find pirates sailing in them. I don't know. 
Actually, I do know it's my universe, but I'm not telling you is what I should really say. I know, but I haven't decided what we're doing in my Sherpa universe. I do think I do paint from a particular perspective of being in a particular sense of how the universe works in my paintings, and what lives there, and what happens, and stories you might run into. I spend a shocking amount of time thinking about it. Yeah. So I'm just lightening this up as we go and making sure that there's some shadows, some highlights, and then we've got nice little whimsical cloud banks that are happening. I think those are cool. I do not hate them, so I will keep them. <laughs> now we're going to put in some water. I think I'll use the same brush. And I am going to mix up a little more of my phthalo turquoise, which again is one part of the blue. And this time, though, I might go heavier on the green because we're in the water. So I'd say like maybe a one and a half part green. One and a half. One and a half. I think I'll keep fuddling along with my little bright here. Now, I'm going to be darker up front, and then as I go back towards the skyline, I'm going to be lightening. And I'm also going to be working this very horizontal, like you do. So just back and forth, horizontal, darkest up front. And then going to be lightening it as I go back. In fact, right about maybe here or so is when I'll be lightening it. You can always dip your brush in water if you need it to have more flow. And then you do the load. Flip, flip, flip. Nice little aqua. So one of the things that I can do with paintings is I can saturate things and play with the color of things, making them more than they are in life. And that's one of the ideas that you can paint worlds better than you can live in that are even findable. It's a different type of wanderlust, the one that you can create while you're painting. As I go back, I'm going to start to add a little of the white to my mix to sort of lighten it and talk about how it's going to be lightening. Just going back and forth. You can see I'm just adding a little bit of the white. I'll just softly stroke from left to right, back and forth as I'm coming closer, and I'll be lightening up as I go back. And when I come up to my horizon line, I'm going to make as level of a line as I can for the ocean, because the ocean doesn't tend to tip and spill out, not what it does. And already, we have a distant cloud bank. Just with this amount of work, that's how important brush directionality, I think, is. You okay, babe? You're so quiet. Oh, I'm just watching. Ah. <laughs> just watching. I just enjoy it. I'm so glad you do. Because I wouldn't want to do the show without you. <laughs> what? It'd be so much less fun. I'm just making sure everything is nicely covered. I'm going to look and make sure that my horizon line is light. I'm going to be like back here in the white again. Now, as I come forward, I might do a little more light right here into this water, as you can see. See how I'm doing? Yeah. And I'm just talking about maybe a spot of water that had a little more light on it than the rest of it. I may actually get some glaze to improve some of the flow and glazing of my paint. Just grabbed a little more of blue-green pigment. Glaze, 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 glaze. I'm going to use it almost like they use floating medium in the decorative painting. And just allow it to help me flow my paint out and let all the little pigment come off my brush. 
Oh, there we go. That's a nice day. Are you having a nice day on your canvas? I'm having a nice day on my canvas. I think every, I think it's very nice day on the canvas. Now we can also take a little bit of the white, just tip it on our brush like this, and you know, put little little bits of waves, like brushing over it, blending it in. Now you do you always use mediums? I don't always use mediums because you can use just water with acrylic paint, but mediums have a purpose and a job, and a lot of times they modify our paint. So it'll do things that it either doesn't intrinsically want to do or that it doesn't easily do. And by, I'm like, grab the glaze here. And by adding the medium to your kit, you're able to modify the base nature of your paint so that you can get more of the results that you're trying to get as an artist, I think. But they're not strictly necessary. And the purists who are like, you should never use water in acrylic paint, um, that's not really true. The whole purpose of this medium is that it is water soluble. <laughs> right. So, yeah, if you're trying to go for some sort of historic longevity because you're the greatest painter that ever lived and you're trying to keep your paintings alive into perpetuity and help uh, conservators not have to struggle so much to keep your artwork intact, yeah, you could avoid using water. Uh, maybe add a hundred years to the life of your painting. In its 500 year life, if that was super important to you. Right. And it might be. <laughs> and I have a friend <laughs> that honestly is in it like, well, if my artwork's the last artwork standing, I'm the most famous artist. And I'm like, okay. We need to stop keeping flies as pets. <laughs> oh my. And talk, Twix. bring another one in. <laughs> I know. We just got the other one out. And Twix just put another one in. Uh, and, uh, Make sure that's what it is. Oh, yeah, it is one of those. Because I almost, I almost ran away, guys. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> if that had been anything that stings or bites, there would have been a scream in your ear. And then me not on your screen anymore. Me hitting the mute. <laughs> uh, you, you would need to hit the mute. I'm going to put out a little of my paint now. Because we're at that next stage where I can put out some more of my colors. We start talking about things a little bit more. I'm going to put out a little of my yellow ochre. And I'm going to put out some of my black. Let's get the rest of these colors out now. All right. Here we uh, go. Put out some burnt sienna. That's nice for this wonderful day. Because we're making rocks and things, right? Yeah. When you're making rocks and things, you need certain colors to accomplish your rocks injure things. I've got green out, but I could probably put some more green out here. I'm going to get, you know, a lot of this laid in and then I will add my other colors as I'm going. Boom, some dots. Purple. That is a superpower. Dots purple. Mm. It super is. It's a it's a super polluting. Oh my goodness. It it is a unique pigment, it's a unique color. It doesn't actually, yes, like it has somewhat of a complement on the color wheel, but actually, uh, if you look at the scientific uh, way that wavelengths work, it doesn't have an opposing opposite color on the color wheel. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. What are we doing? Oh, I'm going to yeah. paint some paint. I'm going to oh. paint some paintings. Uh, I think I'll grab a cat's tongue. So, this is a number eight cat's tongue in the Art Sherpa line. By the way, guys, you could do this with a bright like this, and you would be okay. So don't, or around, like, don't let the brush be your limiting factor. I'm going to get a little of this diox. I don't need that much onto my brush. I may even wipe a little off of my towel. So it's there, but there's not so much of it there. I'm never going to be able to get it back out. And I'm going to mix it into my yellow ochre. Now. Even though Diox doesn't have a true complement on the color wheel, it's essentially a complement to yellow. So you can do entire paintings using Diox purple and yellow paint. It's like crazy what you can do. But I'm going to make this distant hill the way distant hills want to be made. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. So let's come up in our horizon just a smidge. Because we want to say that there's this sort of little land mass that's over here. Yeah. 
line, and it'll come down a little bit past the horizon line. So it's closer to us than the most distant place in our painting. We're going to come here and have a little peninsula go out. Who doesn't need a little peninsula? I think we do. We do. It's freaking me out, John. I am. I'm not like friendly to like, like certain voices, and so I'll be like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Don't oh, the, run away. The, the Don't scream and run would, away. I haven't seen it, so I. I'm I, trying to narrate it so you guys understand oh. why everyone. If I if I jump or I'm acting jumpy, that's what's going on. I'm not. Yes, I am a crazy person. I don't know, but you've got just my palette showing. It's hiding from you. I swear, it's like the electronics. It knows you're coming. And you're hunting it, and it knows I'm not hunting it. So then it's bugging me, and then it's hiding from John. And seriously, it knows. It knows. It's gone into full dark right now. It's like fly spy over here. So like, I don't know if you guys get this, but it's like the fawns. You know how like nothing works for anybody else, and then he comes by and he's like, hey, and he hits that thing, and it all works. That's my life. Like. Wait. John goes out of town and every appliance breaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the warranty period ends. Yeah. It's just frustrating. I want this distant little hill. Distant, distant little hill. Yay. Now, a couple of things whenever you're working with digital collages, you have to correct for the lighting, which means that things aren't necessarily lit the way they should be by, by, by a light source. It takes a really good artist to collage uh, photo images together and a lot of time, and, and you'd have to go collect all of them yourself. So when we as painters do these, we've got to make sure that we are correcting for that. So I'm going to be changing some of the orientation of the light just because we're saying by our clouds where it's coming from. And I'm going to be making sure that I'm enforcing that reality just a little bit. So I will be lighting that side of our little hill here. Maybe some of this right there. By what I'm trying to say is like, and is lit. I'll bring a little sweep down here. And I'm going to come along my little sandbar and light some too. Just along the little sandbar because we want to talk about this lighter. Like it's, 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 there's not, that's like where the beach is. I want to lighten that. Okay, I'm going to pop that in. Be a little bit more even there. There we go. See how that's looking on? Yeah, see now it has shape, doesn't it? It has shape. Has something anyways. I'm gonna take a little of my black and my yellow ochre. I'm going to come right here and make sure that I talk about a steep incline happening here. Yeah, a little shadow a couple of places. Again, when I'm doing like if I put one right here and I come here and I I'm going to come down under some of this stuff to talk about some different places along the beach line that are, are darker. I'm going to bring a little bit up into this. Now I'm creating this, this, this shapey landmass. Yeah. By doing this, I'm like, shapey landmass. Let's see how shapey, shapey landmasses. Shapes. And what's fun about this is it's got a little bit of this sort of far away. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna and my green. And I'm going to make this sort of very dark green. I don't know. I'm going to even change up brushes. I don't necessarily want. Let me dry this real quick because I, I don't want the paint underneath to lift up too much. But I don't want it to be as green as what we have here. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say. Yeah, this has been pretty interesting. I've just been sort of quietly watching because I really, I really enjoy how the contrast of the blue and the brown have actually come together. The way that the kind of clouds have all formed up. I just, I've really just sort of been 
in quietly enjoying this. So thank you guys for coming and joining us here. Um, I'm going to just go over and say, wow, there's a lot of you guys here hanging out. So um, thank you. What's love up? You guys. Just saying I love everybody. I Things love them awesome. too. Can I say that too? Yeah. Okay. Oop, I don't need that button. That button. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just tap. I'm going to just use my brush to tap in some little land masses. Land I, tr what I'm doing masses. here is I'm keeping the idea of the placement, but I wanted this to feel a little further away. Like it was a little stop before the stop, like the stop before Neverland. We'll just definitely make sure that we're, see I'm wiggling this brush and I'm making sure that some of these lines are not. Absolutely, yeah. Methodical or even, but they're random and they're plant-like, but they're far away plant-like. You know, and you can always like come up here and say, all right, there's like this little canopy maybe above that little land there. Similar thing here. We soften that little edge, saying that there are trees and things that are there. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. All right, now we put some plants on it. We thought about it anyways. I'm going to get a little of my... The green and the brown together, less brown into this mix, and a little of my cad yellow into it. And a smidge. Smidge of my work. Smidge it. Smidge it. You're going to create little highlights out in your tree map. I can even softly go over some of my ground mass and now the ground is sort of peeking through. I'll get a little more of my yellow on there. Boop, boop, boop. Too much yellow. That's okay. Work it through. So you go boom, boom, boom. You just don't want the high pops of yellow. What you want to imagine that there's light coming right there. You're just talking about some of that. Some of those different values in this greenery that's distant and far away. See how distant and far away our greenery looks. Pretty distant, pretty far away. I'm going to get into my yellow ochre because we want to avoid a super bright value even if we're lightening the value, if that makes sense. Because things that are far away, they might be lighter, they might have all those things, but they won't be saturated. Wiggle a little highlight right here. And wiggle a little highlight right there. Now. Okay. I'm going to put out a little more of my white. A little more of my white. And I think... I might grab a little brush, a little, little brush. Maybe my little cat's tongue. Woohoo! So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to load up some of my glazing medium and grab some of my phthalo blue. It makes this nice deep color. I'm going to come along my land mass and darken some of it. I'm just softly darkening it. I'm just using the tip of the brush to soften that out. You need more glazing medium, you get it. Right here. See how that's doing in our little ocean. See how that starts to push that far back? Yeah. And that's what we're doing. We're saying, hey. Push this a little bit back along here. Now, 
And this next part is interesting, and I may do it with my Cambridge. There is and should be a little of this and maybe a smidge of the purple on there. I'm going to add a little of these reflections. I pull down. And I'll come across and I'll soften this. But I'm just trying to talk about the reflection water. Look how I'm using the tip of the bristles to soften all of that. Yeah. It's a very light pigment load. See how that's looking in my water? It's starting to reflect. Now I can go ahead and get a little of my green and a little of my yellow ochre. Even a little of my white. And take some of those reflections into the water as well. Because they're there. I can get a little of my white. Now, how and difficult do you think this, this is? This painting today? Yeah. Let's let the hoots go. No, it's going to be about three hoots. Three hoots? Yeah. Just because there's layers, and there's a lot we're correcting for in the reference. There are layers. There are layers. But look at our reflection. We're learning about that a little bit. Is our island just like reflecting out there now? I think so. Crazy how that island can reflect. Pull that in. I'm taking this up a little bit closer. See how I'm doing? I'm going to grab a little of my white. I'll work it into my brush and my yellow. I'm going to make sure that there's a a bit of a kind of implied shear there a couple spots on the land here that are different highlights yep yep we're just shaping our land right shape the land shape it <laughs> shape it good all right a little black into that dwarves like doing that they do they do be a little dwarf be a little dwarf and you're painting right now be a or a hobbit dwarf. be a hobbit here and kind of create a little we're making this crazy little alcove and then I'm just trying to shape up this space talking about how this is rolling up to the mountain there we go Some of that. Now, I'm going to come along and get a little of my black on my brush. And I use some water to make it quite thin. I'm going to get some blue. And this is going to be a very fine line along that edge. That's a nice fine line along the edge. It starts to pop it. I'll add some of that dark value a couple of places in my distant little hill. There we go. A lot of thought for a distant, faraway little hill. Hmm. It is. That hue over there. And be as important as that hue over here. Yeah. 
So now we have some things distinctively lit and not lit. Has reflections, right, which we want. And we can even, you know, proceed to be very considered about what those reflections might even feel like. We just work them around. Right up to this little edge here. See how we're doing? Yeah. Think about it. Playing with one too long, so I got that one a little bit long. So I'm going to just rinse my brush. I'll come back and shave that out. I'm not married to anything. I don't have to. I'm married to John, but I'm not married to my paintings. But I like marriage. Don't take it as I don't like marriage. I like marriage. Marriage is fine. <laughs> this mic is not fine. It keeps wanting to come off today. How's that looking? Do you looking have a really Is it far away? It's looking in the distance. It's in the distance. It could be great. It might not be great. It's hard to say. You know, these scale things can be really challenging. Now, all of this is dry. I'm going to make sure this is dry. I'm going to sketch a couple things in, and then we're going to have a lot of fun with the flowers and the vines and the steps and this view, right? So you guys ready to have a little fun with the view? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do, 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 do. I would say... I've said hi to you guys a lot, and oh, you should check out the website, because on there you can find out how to get gnomified. One might say, what do you mean, John? What's gnomified? And so what I'd say to that was gnomifications are how we uh, give SMS notifications to everybody. And an SMS notification, uh, it's a text message, uh, so we text you right before we go live. And the way we do that is I, I go out and I have a chat with some gnomes, and the gnomes go and they run around and they text everybody. And that's why they're called gnomifications. So if you're interested in getting a text message right before we go live, then uh, go out to our website and check it out. There's a little uh, little infographic right there on the landing page, www.theartsherpa.com, where you can find out how to get not uh, text notifications before we go live. I'm loading up a little dark color because I just feel a thing that I just want to create more of a, a shape or consideration into this space here so it feels a little rocky felt smooth and I didn't want it to feel as smooth as it was feeling. I wanted this to feel like a little rocky edge right here. Shading that out. It's not just a weird point. Because <laughs> it could be, but it isn't. And I don't want it to be. You know, just pay attention to what you've got going on in your paintings. And you can always, always come in and say, oh, wait, no, I would like this to jut in a little bit. using like that make it a little more interesting creating a little rougher edge there on that little far bed it's a weird thing care about it i know all right so what we essentially have here is a beautiful little arch right coming here down to about this space where it's got a landing. And we have this great little opening that views everything right here. And we have some nice little steps and some little stones that are going to come down. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just blocking in some of the stuff. I'm not even really so much doing that yet. Okay, there's a stone here. And there's a nice little flat stone right here. Then kind of coming out, there's a little step space. So I bring the line out horizontal and then I come back into perspective and down. Whenever we're doing steps, we sort of do the same thing. This line and this line will be stepped down from each other, they can be smaller. We 
we just try to make sure that our parallel lines stay parallel as we come down our little step space. There's not a lot of steps showing, a lot of bush here. Then maybe we have another nice big rock. They've got some bricks, but you could have whatever you wanted as your little landing space and some dirt. And all the rest is just this incredible garden with this wild arch. So let's get some of that in. Let's block some of those rough values in. So my stone color today is going to be a little of my yellow ochre and my dock's purple. I think they make a nice gray. But I may even put some black into it to gray it more. A little more black. Create a little stone gray. And we're going to say that the highlight part of our step is right here. And we're going to just actually do this with like a loose brush stroke. We're not going to be very particular. And then this little landing is light. So we just want to make sure that we've got these nice little steps back there. I've got a little rock right here. Look at that little rock happening there. He's got another little rock friend. Maybe this rock friend is more, uh, got some blue in it, so he's more of this gray. Look at that cool gray rock friend. And I'm just, look how loosely I'm putting these in. Rock shape, oh, rock yeah. shape. Very loose stuff at this stage for me. I'm going to come here and say step, step, step. So it's like this light, this dark, this light, this dark. A little bit of the blue and the black. Our like little rock value now, here. And again, we're going to come in with tight brushes and really think about it. But right now, we're just saying rock. Little brush Sophia would really like Hi, you to Sophia. say hello. Hi, Sophia. I've got a lot of little brushes that have been through here, and but Sophia has been has been very much would like me to say hello, Sherpa. Hello, Sophia. There's lots How of are love you there. today? lots of love to our little brushes who are coming and hanging out. Fun to paint places we imagine, isn't it? Got to tell grown-ups that so they believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Kids know it. Kids know how important it is to paint places that you imagine. I'm going to add a little shadow to the front of this rock. and Maybe some more shadow to the front of this rock. Dark value here. And underneath here, I'm going to just be like a little of my black and green. And I will do all of my dark foliage. Here, and you can see I'm just, look at that, I'm just darkening that value. Not even, not even a thing. So what I've done is I'm sketching in space. I am not really even laying out. I'll get more particular about that and things like perspective and stuff. But you really want to start talking about certain values when you're early in. I'm going to take my black, my blue, and my green, and I'm going to make this very dark base of my arch. So my arch, I'm going to wiggle my brush, kind of almost in the way we wiggled the clouds. This is for the darkest value on the ivy that we're going to be building up. I thought about sponging again, but I wanted to show you guys another way to get these kind of objects in. Now, like, make sure that some of your ivy comes out and that your arch is inviting. I may even exaggerate my arch somewhat and let my arch look through more of the ocean. I will stop it here because I'm going to put some little... Vines and branches up, so I got to leave room for that. 
Look at that. So load, load, load. Here we go. Blue, blue, blue. Black, black, black. Green, green, green. We have a little arch. The rest of this is just about pulling these spaces up. Now, you can do this all green. You could do this as wisteria. You could do this as blooming roses. So there's a lot of plants. This is this is the first conversation that we're having about any of this right now. And you can continue to explore this idea. Hmm, just enjoying that a little bit. See, I just do that little scumbling and it just gives me a nice little space here enjoy and you're like the, the cloud <laughs> just all pink so you just want to look and say oh is that shape that's a nice shape those shapes work well with each other i'm going to get i'm going to go ahead and load up a little more green because i know i've got a little bit of this greenery shape that comes along here and we do have some roses and things there so i'm going to definitely want to exaggerate some of this here and then let's give ourselves another little wonderful bush space right there. We have this wonderful walk. We've got rocks. We've got all kinds of things. And we have these colors in and we kind of know where everything is. So once we have all that in, we can start playing with our green on greens. And I can take this green and maybe even a little bit of my turquoise into it because it's such a wonderful little green and get some cad yellow. I'm not even gonna change brushes. Just fun stuff. I'm going to make sure that I talk about some of these leaves light Add a little light on this leaf because where's our sun? Coming down. You got to make sure that you're willing to come in and light your arch, your wonderful space, with little bits of, of sunlight that are coming down. And I'm just tapping this. Look at this. Tap it away. I leave dark value, you gotta leave light value. I may even come back with some more dark value again. I'm willing to play with it as long as it takes. I think it's looking really good. Yeah, it can come together real quick. Now right here, there's a different type of bush and they sort of put some hydrangeas in there so I have to decide what I wanna do about that. And since this is a fantasy piece, I'm going to just let myself have fun, and I hope you'll give yourself permission to have fun, too. Now, if you need a little white, pop that color and show what it is. You know, you can get that. And just find the tops of things. Like our clouds, isn't it? It's not that different from our clouds. We're finding the tops and bottoms of things. Boom, boom, boom. Get your yellow ochre if you need it. What's that? Oh, you're getting him? He came out of hiding? Going down. I'm really sorry. I mean, you have a good crossing. I'm really sorry, little fly dude. You just got to not come in the studio. Freak the trip out. Freak her out. A little busy. Sorry about that. You know what I mean? A little busy. Profiling my flies. I know it. <laughs> Pretty much, if you want to come in the house, you need to be a ladybug or a butterfly or dragonfly. So I'm just layering that up and starting to build up those those little bits of paint and value. I'm going to come back with my dark green again. And it's fun to get a little turquoise into it and just make sure that I'm putting in these spaces where the shadows are deep. Need space where the shadows are deep or the whole bush doesn't really happen. You doing okay, babe? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, part of the reason why I was so quiet is that uh, I was 
paying very attention to that guy. To the fly, you're like, I will be quiet. It, it wasn't a fly. It wasn't? No, it was a wasp. Oh, that's not even okay. I was getting him. Oh, that's not even okay. So I, I had... To... All right. So yeah, John had to get him because he knows I'll scream and run. I yes. don't have any... I'm like, I'll lose it. No. no he I, just didn't I, want I you guys him. to be subjected to my fleeing. <laughs> no, he's he's definitely got it. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. Everybody loves my studio so much. They come in and just make sure that there's... A... Sometimes with the modern colors... I don't make us pull in like every color on the planet in here. I'm going to get a little of my burnt umber into this. Sometimes with the modern colors, they can be a little transparent. And so you've got to come back and work them a few times. Get another little bit of the... Oh, that's nice and rich. Look at that. Fun stuff to me, though. Just make sure that I've got those deep abiding values. Now I think because I know it's going to be me messing with this little edge and these steps. <laughs> knowing me, that's what's going to be happening. And I'm going to do my picture in picture. While you guys do your picture in picture, I'm going to be really relying on a good sharp bright to do this, I think I'll get my number four bright here. I'm going to get this wet. I'm going to work some black into it. I'm going to work some blue into it. I'm going to come here and I'm going to start talking about rocks and steps. You know how you do. Rocks and steps. Oh no, Don, another one is back. Right. What is going on? Is there a window open in the house? <sighs> okay. Not as urgent. Not as urgent. I'm going to just use the sharpness of this brush to really help me draw in. Really help me do. And I'm going to say I hope you guys are having a nice Sunday painting like I am. I'm going to make sure that this value on this far side of the step is pretty dark. In fact, I'm going to get some black even. Okay. That one's a total fly. Had to get we don't mean that as an insult, little fly dude. We're just saying. Yeah, no, I had to do visual confirmation on him. Like, if you're a wasp, you're going down, dude. You're going down, dude. But, we no. We appreciate that you may have a purpose in nature, but not in the art studio. Sorry, man. I've, like, normally I'm trying to vacuum up the bugs and get them outside with a little bug. There he goes again by you. He just did a buzz by you. They love me. I'm he so sweet. Saw. I'm so sweet they love me. I'm going to get him. I'm okay, though. I'm okay. I'm, I'm less panicked. I'm all right. He's just, you know what? He's just visiting. He likes the painting so much, he's decided to visit. <laughs> I'm just, you know, making sure that these are sort of crisp and look like they are hewn stone. Like you might have. Let's get a nice little shadow out from this. And again, making sure that these little spaces right here. I love the sharpness of this particular brush. And that's going to be really helpful when I'm getting all these little rocks in. So once that first part of the steps are in, I can take this color and I can get my white into it and my black into it and get the next kind of stone color going. And right here on this step, interestingly enough, I'll put my first sort of little highlight that's happening here. And it, I'm sort of dry brushing that in. And again, at the front of the step, but not the back of the step, I may even add another little highlight. There's not really a lot of highlight at this step. And I'm just, I'm limiting the steps. I'm just going to do three steps. There's no point in doing all the steps. <laughs> because they're not adding, like, anything in particular, you know. We're just trying to talk about, I'm getting a shadow, but it's a, it's a highlight within the shadow. It's going to show the light sort of here on that. 
maybe even a little bit there. Bring that down a little bit. So you can see every time we add a layer, it gets more like stone or rock or something. And then, and then, I'm going to load up with a little of my yellow. Get a little black in there. But it's this warm space, and I'm going to get my white. Kind of defining it. Come along the front edge. I'm going to just do this dashing mark here, like this little dash. Dash. That's going to be a nice little texture. Right? Kind of like a little ground. And as I go forward, I can work a little of my brown into it, but I work it into my dirty brush. Look at how I work it into my dirty brush. Work that ground. Hmm. I want to create this sort of dry ground space here. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. into the brush again. I rinse out even when I want a dirty brush every once in a while. And the reason that I do that, that I will sometimes rinse out, I'm going to come back with a slightly darker color where the step would have a shadow. And I'm going to definitely wiggle and softly process this here. It's fun to take some of these little colors places and age things. See how I'm going here and I'm aging? Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Say boom, boom, boom. Make you feel better. I like it. <laughs> All right. Into my stone. So I got my blue. I can even get a little of my burnt sienna in there. A little of my black in there. Rock color. Rocky rocks. I'm going to find it. Find it, find it, find it, find it. And on the top of this, I'm going to definitely give this guy a little, little thoughtful. Little hue over here, right? Come out. Maybe this little side of it is jutted out. It's a big rock. Oh, downward. This little guy here, he comes out and it comes out and is sheerly down. And the sharpness of the brush is going to help you find these little spots. I'm going to get a little more of my white on here, work it through. White on here, work it through. Let's make this have a nice little angular kind of cut base. That's an angular little rock, isn't it? Yeah. This little friend here can be right here, a little angle. And right now what I'm just trying to do is just make sure that I've got rocks that are sharp and edged. I'm going to make another little rock right here. And he's going to come to light as I'm painting. And one other thing I'm going to want to do is really come back with some dark colors. And it's going to be the play of sharp dark against all this here that's going to start pulling these together. Like right along here, it's gonna be quite dark. And on this back side, I'm gonna put a little value in there. Boom, boom, boom. And the ground even can have a little bit of a base. And you can come into your rock and be like, give it some sharp shadows as if something has, you know, cut it or done something to it. A little water, work it through, work it through, work it through. Sharp brushes really help with this work. You're just trying to say, oh, hey, there's some rocks. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my yellow and black together. Boom, boom, boom. A little white on that. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, hold on just a second. We're seeing a little buffering right now. Uh-oh. So I'm going to see what I can do here. To just give me a moment. And what we're going to see is if we can... Uh, I think we can. Hold on just a second. I'm going to do the magic Sherpa button. And then that way it goes... Goes. And now we are. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little more of my highlight and I'm going to play with some of these. It's my yellow and my black and my white. And I'm just creating little, little spots of rock that, you know, we're going to create little highlights on that are more in the sun. We'll pull this one like angle and maybe some there. A little rough through here. A little rough edge there. Okay, let's pull this down. See, I'm just doing this sort of rough. Just creating these little rocks. Another little edge here. Work your faces until the contrast starts to pull the shapes out. So you want all those faces that are in the sun to have some bright highlights, but they won't be a solid bright highlight. There's parts of them that are, you know, more highlighted. So you just got to cover those bits. Oh, that is, or, you know, maybe a little part of this. Perhaps a lot of that gets a bit of light. And I'd love to do the top of that little round fellow. I mean, it's kind of light. Get back into my black and my blue. A little shadow down on that. And also rough up its surface. I want all of it. I'm going to come down with this darker shadow. So see how this is not as dark as my darkest dark, but it's still a pretty dark shadow. And I'm going to softly dry brush that back so the top of the landing has some shadow in it, but it's not completely in shadow. So these should give us, black and blue again, this should give us enough dark value. that we are really able to see the shape. We're exaggerating that value so we can see these shapes. And I think that's all we needed for our rocks. I'm feeling pretty good about our rocks and steps. The last thing I might do is get just a little bit of this yellow into my brush, work, work, work. A little bit of the white into my brush. I might even switch to zinc, but I may not. And just throw just a little bit of sunlight to the front of the step. And maybe, guys, just a little bit on the ground. See here? A little bit of sunlight on the ground. Focus right there. You can even drop bits here and there on your rock. Around. See how we're doing? Where we pop a little sunlight, and it does make it feel like in that dark, we're seeing the light. Now, I'm going to get my yellow and I'm going to work it, work it, work it through. I'm going to get a smidge of my green. I'm going to work it, work it, work it through. I'm 
And we're going to start. Let's get the outer edges of some of this really lit. I do want to leave some of the, um, I don't want pure cat. I do want green into this. We're just wanting to talk about where that light is hitting. So, so notice that I'm leaving shadows where I can. Might come and get this brighter green, but it's not all the way bright green. Let's light this bank. We'll do the first run of lighting that bank. Light that bank a little bit. Let's light some banks. You can see I'm pushing in a little shape. It goes boom, comes in, it wanders here. It's going to come up. So I'm going to leave that shadow. Where else might I leave shadows? Well, really, I'm going to be light with the paint. I'm going to blend these colors. You can see me doing it, but I'm leaving this quite dark underneath, aren't I? There'll be a few of these leaves in light on the back side, but not too many. I'm just pushing that forward. Going through. Let's go top sides, top sides. Look for your top sides. And remember, we're saying the light's coming from here. So we have to make that adjustment to put the shadow on the back side or on the inside of our bushes. Right? We have to know that we're lighting this part or not another part. Now, right here, we're going to start talking about lighting some of this. We're just going to tap that in. Interesting little shape and it's going to come around up oh, almost over our rock a bit. And just press that in. We're just creating a, that first run of dimensionality to this green. Still keeping it deep there, but we're actually going to have to go pretty light in a little bit. So you can even come in with some of your yellow and say, all right, right here, this little fellow's got some very light. We'll even work it up from here. Really only talk about the highlights of its foliage. Let there be still some deep value. If you've got to soften it here, and you should, do so with the light pigmentation like you would a root. See, I'm going back and forth. Yeah. Right, that's all we're doing, guys. How you doing? Deep breath. <sighs> Stretch up. Oh, painting is so much work. <laughs> Huh. Painting is hard, but I like it anyways. I'm sure we've got some little lights here. We've got some depth still. Now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's get a number four cat's tongue. Number four cat's tongue. <laughs> Run your yellow through there, and if it picks up the green already, great. If it doesn't, go grab a smidge of green. All right, you got that. If you need to gray it back so it's still in the natural colors, again, purple, your friend. Weirdly, you get a bunch of the like. See, I'm grabbing just a little, and it just takes the high saturation out of some of it. I'm going to use this brush to talk about the shape and texture of some of these green spaces. And they're gonna it's going to help me do some of these different leaf textures that I've got a foot all around my paint. See how I can just tap that out and it just feels like little leaves against that scumbly space. It's also going to let me bring out 
some of that into my sky area, which I'm going to really need. Need, need, need. A little bit of that here. Maybe it's highlighted right there. Not everywhere. Some places. Look at that. We're going to highlight that right there. Oh, I love this brush. Because I can do sharp leaf, soft leaf. Oh, we're getting, we're getting textures in green. We're not afraid of green. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go green on green on green on green. Why would you be afraid of green? I don't know, because people forget that it's a tonal study. <laughs> and they try it, and then when they do remember, oftentimes they'll lighten it with white, and then it gets all minty, and they weren't trying to be minty. You gotta remember to lighten your green with yellow first, and that's what zinc is for if you have to really play with that. I'm gonna get my brush a little wet, because the paint comes off beautifully. I'm just making sure that there's some of that. Now, where I've got the leaves where they could be hitting the sunlight, I'm going to come with a little green right here. It's not the brightest, brightest green that I've got, but I do want some of the leaves to be backlit. Pull some of that right there. Oh, I'm doing the jaunty thing. Arm behind me like I'm fencing. Fence with the camera. See how we're touching the top of that? Where's that light? It's right there. I'm not afraid. We've got stamina. This is our Sunday. Take it in. Just right on the top there. Hey, maybe some of that. Some of that hue over there. Let's, let's go like this and let's get a little white. Okay, great. Okay. Hmm. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I'm. I'm going to. What? I'm reading. Oh. <laughs> So, what are the, I, this, this is, is a, what John usually says. By the way, we've been off air for an hour now. Oh yeah, no, no. <laughs> this is one of those ones that I was just reading. Okay. So Jana is having some some trouble. All right, Jana, tell me what it is, girl. So she says I need uh, I needed to thicken some paint. Uh, so I heated up two tablespoons of cornstarch and no. one and a half cups of water. No. No. And until it no. began to thicken. And, no, sweetie. Yeah, no. It, did no. nothing but coagulate her paint into yeah. a giant gel no. ball. Uh, there are not food products or soap products or anything in your kitchen that should go in your acrylic paint. Um, in watercolor, believe it or not, there's some cool kitchen science that you can do. Um, even in oils, there's some cool kitchen science. For sure, in tempera, egg tempera, there's some cool kitchen science. But in acrylic, definitely not. Um, if you're trying to thicken your paint, uh, it, now were you trying, was it just like weak sauce or was it you were trying to build up something i am not sure pro uh, you know it, it, i imagine the uh that they're trying to thicken her per paint here you know because some of the uh you know soft body paints as you're you know especially craft paints and things like that trying to come with a with a low cost method of making those thicker so they'll act more so like the heavy body. low cost method like good but yeah. inexpensive I'm do, 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 do. The Sherpa dashed off. I have no idea where the dash went. She, she's oh, she's rummaging over here, and she is back. Oh, very low cost method. Super nice, heavy body paint. Very inexpensive. Oh um, yeah, that's a good point. Just a lot of times, as a now, I'm like gonna I, say I, this. They have a set price. The pouches that you can get them in the pouches. Uh, they're really fantastic. Talon. Also, uh, it, one is called Abstract, that's Senlier, 
Mm -hmm. Another one's called Talon, mm -hmm. and uh, that is, uh, it's called uh, Amst Amsterdam. Yep. Here's the deal. Why is it that there is not a great low-cost paint alternative? I was just actually riffing with an artist friend of mine. The issue here is basically this. There's not enough of us. Do you know how in makeup there's fantastic brushes and low-cost makeup palettes, and there's all kinds of options that you can get into because there's such a big consumer base. And that allows these makeup houses to have buying power and then they can, you know, through consumerism, drive the cost down. This is not what's happening in paint. There are little boutique houses that make really good paint. And then everybody else. And then everybody else that doesn't understand how paint is made, especially when it comes to acrylic. So it's not, I don't get paid a, like, at this moment, I'll tell you if I ever do get paid a lot of money to talk about a paint. Right now, I'm just talking about paints that I love. And I've met the people that make them, and I test the product. So that, the, the sun layer, tested it, great. And it's, uh, it seems to be about 4 to $6 a pouch, depending and on where you buy it from. Yeah, you've pick, you started picking up the new, there's some house uh, artist loft. This is you can get those with coupons. Not the basics, not the level one artist loft. This is the level, level three. three, and it is it's you know it's a contender. Um, just knowing where and how and when and you know uh, don't pay list for paint and definitely use your coupon. Now, the big thing I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say as a somewhat show oh, oh, producer. Oh, and I just gotta say I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not saying you're, you're wrong. I think it's ingenious and smart. Please don't have gone away. I think no, yeah, it's no, she's ingenious here. and smart that you are looking for creative ways to solve your problem. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, like, I worry because there's so many irresponsible teachers out there like, hey, just add whatever to your paint. <laughs> right? It's like, it's just, paint doesn't work like that. I wish it did. If it did, I would tell you to do it. Um, and, and, and I think it's great you're looking for, you know, we should, as artists, be looking for opportunities or ways or things that we can do to drop our costs. You were being creative. You were being awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, there isn't a good in-home kind of hack like that. There are cool in-home hacks. I've got all kinds of in-home money-saving hacks that actually work that are good studio scent. Um, just unfortunately, there isn't something to add to your paint. Uh, one thing that you can do is upgrade your white. Mm -hmm. Right? You use your coupon, you get your inexpensive white that you get from a pro brand. But that's why the pro is actually more money than a lot of this, the student stuff is that it just is weak sauce. Yeah. Now, and when you get to pro paints, they're going to cost very similar in cost. Mm -hmm. Because within at, a buck or two of each other. Yeah. At that point, you're talking about pigment is pigment is pigment. And that's, that's why I lost it over the like Liquitex Cavium Free. I'm like, wait, Golden's been doing Hue for years and it was a dead match. Like we're pretending like this didn't exist. So anyway, soapbox paint. Soapbox, paint soapbox. We could paint soapbox until, yeah. we, I could have a whole, I, I think I've done them before. Long videos about the paint soapbox. Okay. Yeah, yes. True. But do try, look for that. You can find that online. Cheap Joe's. Mm -hmm. uh, different, different resources. Uh, 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 Jackson's if you're in Europe. So look for those look for those resources. And you know, you're you're better off just to buy a product as it's intended because you'll ruin more products and more things and just go through more money trying to get something than you will just Right. You guys know Deco has a fine art paint, right? They do, yeah. It's called Americana. It's uh not in the aisle that you expect it to be in. But it exists. Sometimes it's set there sometimes. So Yeah. Um yeah, sometimes they put it back with the craft paint. And that's, it's just, I'm going to get this much more yellow green with a little bit of white. And a lot of people don't know that that's a resource. So see how this is very bright? I'm just trying to get some very bright. I'm going to have that on this outer edge here. Maybe put a little more here. Wherever I have these plants, I'm going to try to get that, like, sort of little two-tone little leaf thing happening. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm going to put a little more green into it because I'm going to come back more into the shadowed area. So I'm sorry I was like so emphatic. That wasn't you. I wasn't like responding to you, sweetie. I'm just like. Oh, Jessica is in labor watching the Art Sherpa and she says it's making it a little easier for her. Okay, remember, keep your voice low. <laughs> <laughs> done, done three of those at home, girl. I'm with you. Everybody. Let's take a minute and wish her a beautiful, easy delivery. 
one of those ones that makes all of us other moms super jealous when we hear about it online. We're like, she, we're, she's just had an easy, easy time. We're just sending you vibes, girl. Vibes. Yes. Vibes. John's caught all of his babies. I did. Even the Canadian where they looked at me like, what? John's like, I got this. Move over. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to tell him how long I'm going to be in labor. He's like, no, I've been here before. We'll be back in an hour. We're going to get some food. <laughs> And if you're not there, I'll be delivering. <laughs> that is almost what happened. That's true. So I'm adding some water and some white to this. And you can see that I'm creating a little bit where the sunlight is catching that texture. We're just, we're just working out some textures, right? Some little vines, some little, little textures. I'm going to get a bunch of yellow into this mix right here. Just a bunch, a bunch. Let's come around here and halo up some of this. I used to know it, but you got to do that <laughs> thing. Yeah? I don't know. Maybe. No. Well, I think my big problem is that I would let my voice get too high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and my really good midwife taught me how to use really low vocals to manage uh my breathing and my pain and then i showed it to my son who is you know he's very sensitive to like his nervous system and it really helped him and now he uses that when he's hurting he like understands that it's okay to cry out but if he uses that reduced like vocal tone yeah then he can manage his pain a little better and i thought that was so cool so yay to midwives share good information but whatever your birth plan is, just don't let anyone derail you. Your time, your baby. Have your baby the way you need to have your baby. I'm not saying you should midwife up. I'm saying you should have your baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just make sure that there's a little bit of this sort of halo right there. I got so sidetracked by that like whole pink thing. I'm sorry. Paint, paint, paint. Paint, 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 paint. I'm going to get a little of my black and a little of my brown. It's easy to derail, derail us. It's easy to derail me. You're you're pretty on point, but I'm, I'm like, what? I don't know. If that adds anything? We'll see. I'm gonna also take some of this out here. I'm gonna do like a little. Maybe a little branch out there. Just some interesting little texture bits, right? That are happening here. Be playful. Here we go. And now I'm going to get into my green. Boom, boom, boom. I just grab what's there. That is so crazy. We have somebody having a baby today. That's so cute. It's such an awesome time. Jessica is patiently awaiting her next little brush. Aww. Aww. Just, just want her to have the best possible like, labor and delivery that you could have. I just had to tell you. I think that's what we sort of lose by our modern life is like, that's one of the things that we've lost, not being in a tribal society, is the way that we can be there for each other through those really awesome moments. So I love this live video because it lets us do some of that. That's amazing. Thank you for coming and being part of our day and sharing that amazing event with us. That's pretty cool, yeah. Absolutely. Coolest live show I think I've done in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome i'm just adding a little of this greenery to these little sticks that we put out here and i think i'll kind of layer over some of these well we're saying that they're here i don't really feel like that added anything to my space at all i'm painting that i don't like that look at that that's how i changed my mind I go no <sighs> don't like that's funny that. no no like that better <laughs> 
it just wasn't working for me the other way. So sometimes that happens and I'm just like, I'm not feeling it, man. Just add a little green. You can just layer the green back up and blend it all together and it'll be awesome. Okay. Just a little bit more of this and then we can start putting in flowers, which is the best bit, right? Let's make sure that we've got some little rose leaves. I just tap this little brush to get those. See, I'm making the different little shapes to create different little thoughts about leaves. And then I'm going to get a little white into it. That'll make it like a different little value than we've had elsewhere, and that's nice. Go ahead and maybe wiggle in a little texture here. We'll leave that. I'm going to leave that quite dark. Now up front, here there was just this interesting little ivy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this little stroke. So I'm going to be doing this little downward stroke to talk about these little leaves that are kind of on shelves. Let's shelve the leaves. We're shelving it. See how we're shelving it? Yeah. Little shelf stroke. So a lot of this is often about knowing like how to talk about the textures of the different plants, even though they and play with those values some, you know, pop those values. Let's get a lot of yellow and a lot of white into this. Ooh, it's nice to pop some of these. I'm going over the top of areas that I've already sort of done that downward paint on. And just Nice as that. How's that look? Now I'm going to get a little of my green and a little of my brown. I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to talk about just something growing out of this dark space. And then to show it off, I'll get my yellow into this. I'll just Touch a little highlight, but not too much, so that it just goes back into the dark. We're like, oh, there's a little something growing out of that. Now, now let's put out our cad red. Let's put out our quinacridone. We've got out our diox and our thalo. So we should be good there. If we need it, we've got some alizarin. I may put out a little of that to play with some of the foliage that I have over on the rose bushes. So if you take your alizarin and you mix it with your phthalo green, it makes this interesting deep color. I'm gonna take it more to the red. I don't know if you've ever noticed that some plants have like this foliage that's more red, but yet still green. It's crazy cool. We're gonna do some of that. And we're going to find little spots and we'll cluster these little leaves up. I love painting this. And I love that, you know, we've got the different little mix of flowers. That's really fun. You could do one of these that you took weeks on. You know? Weeks and weeks. Pulling some of that interesting color right here. It really is nice when you can move it into space. And the back side of that, obviously. Playfulness. Might even work some of these deep shadows into here. Just to play that up. Look at that. Doesn't that play that up a bit? Playing with the value. Sorry, I can't help it. Gotta do it. Playing with my value. There we go. 
So I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone. I'm going to grab a smidge, smidge, smidge of my phthalo blue. It's going to cool it a bit. There we go. And at first, I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to tap a little shelf of flour, and I'm going to tap another little third shelf of flour. It goes over everything. Here on the tip of the brush. See how we're just doing that? Oh, I feel like I just put some, some peek some of this out right here. Then if you go and get into the white on that, you're going to get like lighter value and you can come to the top of that. Hit the top of your flowers. Hit just the top. Where's your light source? Pay attention. Where's it coming from? And then if you want it to be even brighter, you just get even more white into that light source. Hit just a few of them. So we begin to plant. Let's take a little of this quinacridone and maybe uh, get some dots into it. I'm okay with this weird little hydrangea, fantasy hydrangea, but I'm definitely, definitely. Planning on playing with things. So where I have those little puff balls, what I'm going to do. Like that a little bit. And I might even get a little blue into this mix. And some white. Be great. Highlight some of those. See how we're highlighting them? We're just tapping little spaces, aren't we? I'm having a good time. Are you guys having a good time? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's nice. What else could we do? Well, we could do some kind of blue purple ones. So I'm going to get a little of my purple and a lot of my blue, some of my white. Make some tucked in ones that are different places. How I tuck them in my foliage is I have some of them peeking out in and out of leaf, and some of them in full round space. Doing. Oh, that's very lit up. Wonderful purple blue right there. Now I've got a bunch of these great red bits and little interesting red bits. So I'm going to take a little of my pad red medium and my quinacridone and I mix these together. Powerful, powerful combo move I'm about to. Now I'm going to pay attention to the shapes of my clusters. 
We'll put some clusters into the deep area. Back there. Some of them might be more showy out other times. So what I'm painting is groups of bowl flowers peeking in and out. Which basically means I've got to light up a bowl. Not, you know, every petal, not everything. Now, Mel was curious. She's feeling a little disheartened. Disheartened? Oh my gosh, sweetie, I'm sorry. Yeah, so she's, how many paintings does she need to be into before the values are really sort of nailed down for her? For most people, it seems to be somewhere between 20 and 100. Yeah. Uh, the people that get there are the ones that just refuse to give up, and they do practice. They do value studies. They um, take in a lot of information. I haven't ever run into anybody that couldn't get there. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the thing that seems to stop people is being angry at themselves for not getting it in a time frame that they feel like they should, whether that's based on the comparison of other people or just something that they feel within themselves. Like I'm normally this fast at understanding something and this is taking me a minute um, or they're putting their expectations so high. It's not realistic. Like. You can learn to play the piano if you practice and you stick with it. You may not be Mozart. But isn't there a lot of room between where we're at right now, not playing the piano at all, and being Mozart to really enjoy music? Yeah. Right? You can still go play with your friends in a garage band and love your life. Yeah. Right? So you don't have to get to Carnegie for it to be valid. So I'd say it's a play of those things that just mess us up and make us crazed, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I get real stuck, I'll do something in, like really off the nut, like a daily painting. Well, now I do a daily painting every day anyway. But before that, I would be just like, now I'd have to be like, I'm going to paint clouds for three days until I discover a new way to paint clouds. And then I would come out of that. And I might have 100 paintings and I'll have a new way of painting clouds because I'll have I'll, I'll have Navy sealed myself into submission huh. <laughs> on an art sense. But if you're enjoyable journey, try to be painting several times a week. Um, you know, actively process your doodling and everything and talk to others. Because I think if you come into the Art Trooper Group Official and you have a conversation with the community, they're going to talk back to you. Um, okay, go ask my friend. Uh, she has a YouTube channel. It's Abstract Possibilities, Faith Alfonso. She started with me back at Little as Toot first video. You should see some of the stuff she's doing now. And she's, she's hung paintings and she's just doing all kinds of art things. And she really went through that in the beginning too. Like, I don't feel like I'm getting it the way I should. And my, my imagination is bigger than my skills. But come into the Art Trip official. Go, go ask her that question. You know, talk to other people and they're going to say, you know, something between 20 and, you know, 100. Do not, bless you guys that come in and you're like, it's my first painting and you guys nailed it. Bless you. But you're like that skinny girl that eats cake all the time and doesn't gain a pound. I'm not saying you don't exist. And I don't want to give you any shade because we're all perfect exactly how we are. But sometimes we look over and there's a skinny girl eating cake. And you're like, why is that skinny girl able to eat all that cake? And I can't eat cake. See, that's the comparison. That's her journey. She's perfect how she is. You're perfect how you are. Just know you're not lacking something to be creative and get tonal values. You're on a journey. There's a magic number where it's going to unlock for you. There's a class. There's a something's going to say. You're going to practice thing. Somewhere it's going to go click. Like a little puzzle box. Like a happy puzzle box. You are perfect how you are. You're succeeding. The only thing you have to do to not fail is just not give up. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. And not, no hate towards the skinny girls that can eat cake. I mean, a, a little, but only because I'm working on myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Because I'm working on myself really hard. Now. Cake eaters. I know, I know we've been chatty. I miss day. cake. Yeah, I'm just, this is a chatty day. It's this okay. is my Sunday day. It's okay. I'm, so, I'm, I'm kind of shaping out some of my little rose, bold roses here. So I was just kind of, you know, we're about 10 till 2 hours. Yeah. So this is coming together, though. We're pretty. This is a, guys, this is not a small painting, right? No. No, it's not so a small painting. be easy with yourself. You know, I told John today, he's like, what is it like? I'm like, get ready. You, did you need to go to the bathroom? You need to go now. <laughs> just, hmm. just, it's like, okay, I don't know what we're talking about, but yeah. I'm just making sure that there's some of that there. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Okay. Now, while this is all still on here. I'm going to get a little of my yellow into it. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. A little of my yellow. Touch the front of some of these. Don't forget to put little bits of red hidden in the... You have to offload and reload. Go ahead and do that. You're not trying to make orange roses, but you are trying to put some light on some of your roses. Oh, those are lighting beautifully. And then if you can, you can grab a little of your white into this group. Look here I'm going white, 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 white. Uh, how are they now? Are they taking shape? Yeah. Are they pretty. This garden, you can plant and plant and plant and plant and plant. Now, we had a lot of red in this, and I wanted a little more blue, so I'm going to take my blue and a little of my white. And in some of these little bits coming over here, I'm actually going to add this little blue. When we have that blue in, I'm going to get a lot more of my white. We have the dark blue for sure. You get a lot more of my white. <laughs> and so it's That's not okay. white white. It's like a like a blue white. It's like an off white and the blue creates that nice little shadow in the spike of the flower. You can see it. You guys have that in there now? Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. We definitely need some yellow, and the yellow is going to go, pull your yellow, I'm going to get a little of my yellow, I'm going to put a little of my cad red, just a smidge, into my yellow, right? I want it to still be distinctly yellow, but just warmed a bit by the cad. I'm making those same little shapes. I'm tucking some of them. You can also do buds. Don't forget to do buds. Put some yellow there too.
Now, just because my palate's a hot mess, I'm going to put out some fresh yellow. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really more about my palate management than anything else. By the way, we're almost done. Really? Yeah. I don't have that much more to do. I just need to know from the community if they were wanting the birds. Oh, yes. I can tell you right now, oh, they're okay. not going to let us go without the birds. Are you kidding me? I didn't know. Like some people are like, man, why did we paint these birds? I'm like, okay. I, I've been here a minute, man. So I'm just doing the CAD with a smidge of the white and the yellow, and I'm gonna. Do we want the birds? Do you? I don't know. That's that's sharp of blasphemy. I didn't even know there was such a thing. It's like saying we're just gonna skip the flowers today. Don't ever skip the flowers. Flowers is the frosting and the painting. That's what I showed up for. Yeah, I was right. There was just an echo of, of course we want the birds. What do you, come on, Sherpa. Okay. So when we're doing these birds, what you're going to do What gonna kind do of is birds are gonna, they? I'm going to put out a little fresh paint so I'm not fighting my paint having been out for two hours. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> oh, even my black is skinned over. I'm going to have to reopen my black. Is that not really sad? I think it's awesome. Bad paint management. Put out a little white. Everybody's okay, right? Yes. I always panic. I never, you know, I never ever, sometimes I'm like cheeky or funny and I just want to make sure I haven't ever, up, like, I hate to upset anybody ever. Especially on their art journey because I just want them to be able to paint. <laughs> now I'm going to get a little of my blue and my black and I'm going to mix those together. I'll get a little white into it. This is basically a Payne's Gray. You can buy Payne's Gray. I really liked this bird, so we're going to come in here, and I'm going to make a little stroke. This is still my cat's tongue. Now, I may have to switch into one of my detail brushes and get my vision enhancers, just because time. Because <laughs> time. Time keeps on turning, turning, turning into the future. Put on my vision enhancers and get a number to build birds. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing this is because these are small little detail creatures and this will help me have an easier time with this job. Because I'm wanting to catch the shape of him. So I've got this nice little belly. If anything goes crazy or goes wrong, before the paint is dry, you should be able to, like, even come in and sort of, like, erase anything that you need to. See? Wow. Oh. So don't be, once the paint is dry, that's a little harder to do. Well, I've got a little bit of a head here. Right there, it kind of curves up. And there is just a smidge of a beak. Now the tail is flared out in a fan. That can be nice to paint, you know, the shape of. I'm going to get the water onto my brush just to make sure that there's enough flow. The wing comes up. Arcs back, and then the counter wing comes down in a very similar shape, so we know exactly what air the bird is catching. So, right now, if a bird is in this position, right, they are flying. Wow, and they have an updraft that they're catching. If their wings are out like this, they're, they're gliding, is what I mean to say. They're gliding and the air current is coming up enough from the ground, from the warm air to support the bird. So that's what's happening there. So if you're trying to talk about a warm day with friendly weather, birds in this particular flying position are a nice way to convey that. Gotcha. 
You want to make sure that the wingspan of the bird, if the wings full extended, I think it's like some formulation, like almost twice the length of the bird or something. You could probably Google that. But we have those out. And then we've got his little friend up in the sky up here. So let's do another one. I'm going to put him maybe right here. Sorry. Uh, okay, coming like this. A little bit of a head bows out. It's a tiny little beak. We're not leaving these gray. These aren't silhouette birds. In any in any by any means. We're just using this as a starting spot. Again, he's in a different position to us in perspective, so his wing is a little foreshortened. Mm. As he comes over us. I'm gonna make the nicest GIF. <laughs> Isn't it, guys? <laughs> yeah, it is. You guys follow my GIF art, you'll be like, this is gonna make the nicest GIF. All right. So I've got that and that. Now, as I start to come forward, I'm gonna get some of my white and I'm gonna start changing some of these values. So I'm gonna lighten, I'm gonna get into my light gray at first. I don't want my whitest white yet. I'm gonna reserve that for the end. And so on his wing, there's a bit of a highlight here. The light comes like this. And then I definitely want to highlight some of those feathers. And a bit of the top of his body right here. Come and add a little bit of that highlight to the wing. Come right here. Something similar kind of going on up here. Up the wing a bit this time with this brighter light. I'm going to have to come back and put a little shadow. I kind of overpainted it out. Maybe the front of the wing. Back of the feathers. Most of this tail. So we're starting to see our little birds. Yeah. They really are showing up. So the next little bit I'm going to take is I'm going to take a little of this and some of the blue gray with a little more blue in it. And I'm going to make a darker gray than that, but I'm going to lighten some of this up a bit. And I'm going to come and add a little bit of this sort of feeling of wing feathers, maybe some tail here. I tip this a bit, leaving some of the dark, but not so much of that as I'm coming through and blocking out the values a little bit as not as dark because I want to reserve some dark top. For markings and things. So when I have that in, so I'm starting to talk about their values a bit. Now, not yet even a white white but lighter than the first color we did. Right here, maybe some, and definitely coming along that front wingspan. Now my glaze, if I get my black and my blue, right, and I go like this, and I use my glaze, I can do some very cool things. 
I can soften some of this blend. I can create some transitional little shadows. I'm just trying to talk about these little creatures in motion, in flight. I'm going to get some white white right here at the tip of this wing, at the top of this head, a couple of these feathers, maybe up the back, some right here. That little part of the little belly. A couple of little white feathers here. This is tipped fairly light. So see how now our birds are also painted. We are not. Some black. A little of that there for the back. I might even do the little dark spot for the eye. Go ahead and give a little feather there. A little bit at the back for there. Barely see the eye here, so you just get barely. There we go. Now they're lit up. They exist in the world. How oh, they look flying. They look Pretty like they're in good. the air. Oh, they look. Yeah, I think they look really good. Okay, cool. And this is really exciting. Everybody really enjoyed this. I am so glad. It's fun to have a little minute. Let's see, what do I want? Oh, you know what? I'm going to do a light green. So I'm going to come into my yellow, have a little green. Because I don't want my signature to be so uh, out of place on the canvas. And I often try to pick color schemes in my signature. But it's there. But it's not so like crazy there that I can't. I can't deal with it. I'm gonna nope. Spray <laughs> myself. I'm using my mister to thin my paint because we're well. We're at the end. I'm getting klutzy. <laughs> you can always tell when we're at the end. Oh yeah. Because Sherpa starts dropping stuff. <laughs> Just making sure that this is legible. I think it's, you're doing pretty good there. And sometimes people don't know that you can go back and refine it and paint it as much as you painted anything else on your painting. Yeah. So you can see it. All right. I think it's important that we paint the things that we wish was in our lives. I think the things that we spend time with creatively are really relevant. Um, they would like a tour of the painting. Yeah, to give them a tour. All right. Let me go over there. <laughs> So I'm going to slow down and we'll go, all right, I'm going to zoom out here. We'll kind of let you go up a little bit. See, I really like how the birds turned out. Yeah, I did too. They're just so painterly. And so we'll you pull back out. You can kind of see as the whole thing comes together. Really, really turned out nice. I was, I really like that. Good job, really Sherpa. Fun, fun one to do. We've got a really light one coming up, I think, Tuesday. 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 We may we may release one from the vault. <laughs> it's a Q-tip painting all for fall. So there's some light stuff coming up. They're not all three hoots. It was kind of a painting-heavy weekend, but we're going to lighten up for a couple. I want you guys to be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And I want to see you at these really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.